Hey there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explained. So Apple has launched some new iPhones. Now the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Plus use the same processor that we saw last year. So it's the A16 Bionic. I've got a couple of videos about that here on this channel. But the iPhone 15 Pro uses a new chip called the A17, not Bionic, the A17 Pro. So in this video, I wanna break down the information that we have about it and try to dive in a bit deeper. So if you want to find out more, please, I'll let me explain. Okay, let's look at Apple's latest processor, the A17 Pro. First thing to note is the name. A17 is correct, of course, because we've had A16, A15, A4, and so on. But they were all called Bionic, and this is now Pro, which makes me wonder about whether there's going to be an A17 non-Pro version, maybe in some other device like an iPad, or maybe in next year's iPhone, because they've been using the phone, these processors over two years now. So this is the first chip that's made uh, mass produced on three nanometer, made by TSMC. And of course, it's gonna be out in these next few days. And so this is a, a major milestone for the industry. There will of course be other three nanometer processors made by other companies, but Apple are here. And the rumors are that they are of course getting a lot of the capacity that TSMC have for making these chips, they are, Apple have got that. So uh, a good step forward here. This is what we we're expecting, this is what we were working towards. After a few years of five nanometer, we are finally now here on three nanometer. And what have they done with that three nanometer? Well, they've packed in 19 billion transistors, which is just absolutely amazing considering this is a processor for a for a smartphone, basically for a phone. So this is absolutely amazing. And let's break that down a bit. So there is the kind of the nice little graphic they give of the A17. We'll dive into all those different um, sections in a minute. But the A17 Pro's got 19 billion transistors at three uh, nanometers, as I said. And that's up by three billion transistors compared to the A16. Now, I think a lot of that is gonna be in the new GPU, there's a whole new core added, so that's gonna add in more transistors. They've got ray tracing technology, we'll dive into all of this. And they've redesigned the CPU block as well, uh, both the high performance ones and the energy efficiency ones. We'll get all of this in a moment. So that's good. So that's compared to the A16, which had 16 billion transistors. Now, the A16 wasn't that much of an impressive processor. I made lots of videos about it at the time that it came out. One reason we knew it wasn't going to be significantly better is it just had an increase of a billion uh, transistors. Now, I know these, these numbers roll off the tongue. Oh, just, just a billion transistors. But as you can see, there was a 3 billion change now from the A16 to the A17. If we go historically now through the others, we can actually see that for a long time, 3 billion transistors was the kind of the, the kind of shift we were expecting from each generation. So we're starting back with uh, 8 billion transitions to the A13. And here we are now in the A17. We've doubled that number of transistors, more than doubled that number of transistors. And we've gone from 7 nanometer down to 3 nanometer. Now, of course, remember, nanometers are marketing terms mainly about how much density there is, how many transistors can you pack into the same area. I do have other videos covering all of that kind of stuff here on this channel. So that in terms of the transistor count, we know that there is some significant changes here. So that that's encouraging, unlike the A16, which really I felt was more like an A15 Mark II. So talking of the CPU core, we're still sticking with that six hexacore uh, setup. So we've got 10% faster is what we're getting. So that is a little bit of a disappointing number. Don't get me wrong, double digit performance increase is amazing. Uh, that, you know, can't be uh, sniffed at. And that's, you know, they've got the improved branch predictor that's obviously a wider uh, engine now, wider uh, uh, decode path on it. it, says so there. So that means it can do more instructions, uh, you know, in parallel, instruction level parallelism. So that's good, but 10% when you're jumping from five nanometers or four nanometers, the five nanometers second generation to three nanometers, we would be normally would be expecting a greater increase in performance just because of the new process node. And then when you add the micro architecture and design changes on top, you should get even more. So 10% is not what I was expecting. I was expecting a higher number and we'll see, maybe they're being conservative. Maybe they don't want to, 
it set expectations too high. We'll see when the benchmarks come out uh, what that actual number is. And then the four efficiency cores, uh, and they're just basically saying that they also have been uh, new improvements. Uh, in fact, that's this next slide here. It says the new CPU is up to 10% faster with micro architectural and design uh, improvements. So that's what we're, we're seeing. We're seeing changes to the design and it's better and you've got three nanometers. Now, the big question that's frozen around is, is this ARM V9? Looking at this information, I would say no, but let's wait and see where, when they come out and let's see what people can dig inside of the compilers and so on uh, and some of the SDKs and iOS itself to see whether it is ARM V9 or not. Let's wait and see. My gut feeling here is that with these kind of numbers and these kind of changes, just wider decode. Well, you know, okay, great, that's good. Uh, why to decode and execute, that's what you need, that's what every generation should be m moving towards a, a better architecture, microarchitecture, but that doesn't feel like an ARM V9 update to me. But the real star, and I admit this for the A17 Pro, is the GPU. So we've now got six cores and it's a bit disingenuous of Apple to do this here, look, up to 20% faster. Well, the previous generation was five cores and this one is six cores. So when you go from five cores to six cores, of course it's gonna be 20% faster. I mean, that's just, you know, sometimes I think Apple think we're idiots, but there you go. But the interesting thing is Apple designed shader architecture. So we know that Apple have been using, borrowing, stealing, whichever way you wanna look at it, uh, the technology it had from the power VR GPUs from imagination and then they had to enter into a license agreement to to keep on using that technology after they tried to use it with, with without licensing it that's kind of the muddy background to all of this but now they're saying they they're obviously slowly redesigning the GPU so it's all their own design and they've got their own shader architecture here that's something they are looking at but of course the big ticket item is this now has ray tracing so here they show some pictures this is a kind of standard rasterized uh, game shot screenshot uh, that's done uh, on, on an iphone or on any computer and what basically you have to note is all these lighting effects like this u-shaped here these these curves here any kind of reflection you're seeing and this is basically it's pre-baked so that light is fixed uh, this is fixed and they can kind of there are some tricks that you can do in 3d uh, programming that allow you to give this appearance of you know these different lighting effects now with ray tracing it's actually done actually traces the beams of light the rays of light and gives you this effect uh, in real time so here's the same picture you've still got the same effects you can you can see there was a it's kind of got a greater fidelity to it and you've got the same kind of you know things that we're seeing but of course now it's done in real time with actually tracing the rays and if you i've got one here side by side you can see the difference like for example here this black spot here you know that that's a reflection of this light up here and the, and this way when they've done the pre-baked lighting they could they couldn't do that or they didn't do that but here you can see it added um and so you know the, the these light these reflections and these light things are all done in real time these things up here are all done in real time from the uh, from the ray tracer uh, and then here uh, and again <laughs> this makes my mind boggle so they're saying look here you could using this same scene you can get eight frames a second if you use software based ray tracing which nobody uses because it is too slow and if you use hardware based ray tracing you get 30 frames a second well of course that's the whole point but they do go on to say well therefore look this is four times faster because look isn't it amazing we can get four times faster ray tracing because you're doing something in hardware rather than software well that's just true about anything if you do encryption in hardware rather than software if you do anything hardware and software it's going to be faster so again kind of trying to pull a bit of a marketing uh, sort of a event there by Apple trying to convince of the things that were are blatantly obviously true if you go from software to hardware of course it's going to be faster now a couple of other things to tie up what we know here it's got the USB 3 controller so remember the normal iPhone 15 with the A16 Bionic in it has got USB-C connector for charging, but it only uses USB 2.0 speed, that's 480 megabits per second. Here in the 17 Pro, you get a USB 3, and it's probably USB 3.1 Gen 2, and that gives you 10 gigabits per second. And the other thing to notice here, we've now got AV1 decoding 
built into the iPhone. Again, hardware decoding, and again, only in this Pro version, not in the previous one. And just to round up about that USB, USB naming can be a real thing. This is the version here that we're using that the um, iPhone 15 has, and this is the version that the iPhone 15 Pro has. So 480 megabits a second, 10 gigabits. And there is some confusion because I've got a whole video about this here on this channel, but USB 3.1, 3.1 Gen 2, 3.2 Gen 2, they kind of went through lots of naming fiascos with this, and they're all actually kind of the same thing, but you have to just work out which ones is. But I, I, Apple tend to use 3.1 Gen 2 on their Mac products for a 10 gigabit uh, connector, so that's what I'm gonna say, 3.1 Gen 2. Okay, that's it, so the A17 Pro. Now, Apple didn't specifically talk too much about performance, no comparisons really to previous generations of iPhone. So it will be interesting to see what the numbers are for both the CPU and the GPU when these devices hit the shelves in a few days time. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Space. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.